You're right, dude. Why am I wearing this? <laughs> it's hot in here. It's like 100 degrees outside. You're like, dude, dude, I finally finished the 1982 video. We can do the requested midnight screenings again. It's the hottest week so far this right, year. Right, yeah. I'm sitting here in like a hoodie shirt and... <laughs> Don't worry, I did I did bring me some water. <laughs> There's plenty it's so good. <laughs> Care for some water mumbles? I'm thirsty. <laughs> wow! Dick Tracy reference. That's I'm holy, really glad you caught that. Holy Otherwise crap. Like, the fuck did he just call me? <laughs> What do you mean mumbles? <laughs> what the what the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> anyway, I'm Brad Jones with Jared Foyles, who you can find on what's your Twitch uh, channel? Twitch.tv slash Jared Foyles. I play uh, uh, drums. Uh, come request music for me to drum along to, and uh, yeah, we have a good time. And I know normally on Mondays you're used to uh, there being a Cinema Snob episode, but I am actually in the middle of writing a book right now, so I wanted to get to that once I finished the 1982 video so I could take some time off from the regular snob show to work on that. That way, that gives you plenty of time to watch that snob episode since it's literally four hours long. By the time you finish watching that, I'll probably be back to doing new episodes, but in the meantime, we're gonna be knocking a lot of these out because these are these are fun to do and they're they're easy to do as well. Mm -hmm. We just chilled out today and watched a few movies. These are requested reviews, which people over on Patreon, if you're one of the top tier requests over on our Patreon, uh, you get to request stuff for us to do on midnight screenings, and that's what midnight the midnight screening show is now is these requested series because when it's a newer movie. As you've noticed, it's just kind of quick, smaller reviews that I that I've been doing. But this was fun. So we got we got a few today, and usually the way that it goes is uh, uh, one popular movie and like two we've never heard of until they got requested. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to do a Clockwork Orange, also the thriller Tiger House, and the uh, Tim Curry crime caper comedy blue i keep wanting to say blue monday <laughs> that's not it blue money that's what blue we're gonna money. be that's what we're gonna be doing today but first commercial break <laughs> spare some cutter me brothers <laughs> Do me and you bastard cowards. We don't want to live anyway. Not in a stinking water like this. Oh? And what's so stinking about it? And we're back. Aren't you glad these aren't live? Right. No, so we can like hit a pause right. just so we could run the air for a little <laughs> bit. So we don't die. <laughs> Like Cujo's outside the car, we're in here sweating bullets. What do we do when this dog's out there? Let's review movies. <laughs> Guys, this is no exaggeration either. Right now, it is, the high is like 95 and with a heat index of like, I think in the triple digits. Yeah, but don't worry, dude. We're in a parking garage where it's way worse. <laughs> Again, though, I got water. I'm good. I'm like Chevy Chase in, uh, in Three Amigos. <laughs> I just dump it on my head. Oh, oh. <laughs> mm. Okay, so we're going to be nice and do Clockwork Orange first. I know that usually in these I save the most popular one for last. <laughs> so people tune in like, oh man, they're talking about Clockwork Orange. Wait, what's Tiger House? Right. <laughs> Give it three hours. We're hold on, talking hold about on, Clockwork hold on. Orange. <laughs> so this is requested by our friend um, Jordan. This was your first time seeing this. Yeah, yeah. We right. should we should name this review Jared's Never Jared's Seen. Jared's Never Seen Clockwork Orange. Jared's Never Seen Clockwork this Orange. This is uh, maybe my hundredth time seeing it. It's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> I'm surprised you weren't like reciting the uh, the dialogue right along with I didn't want to be that guy. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want to make you hate this movie. Like, I'm like talking along with it. Dude, dude, watch. You're going to love this. Watch what he does with that dick statue. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Boom. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just die? No, he's fine. He's legs in a cast. He's good. He's in the hospital. <laughs> so I wasn't 
sure if you would like this movie or not. I, I didn't know because Clockwork Orange is such a unique experience. Sure. It's not like I could think off the top of my head like, well, if you like this, maybe you'll like this. Sure. I, the only thing I could think of is like maybe train spotting. I don't know. Um, but... Hmm. Or, or, or Caligula, maybe. <laughs> I've shown you Caligula, right? Yeah. yeah. Would you, all right, all right. Here's a question for you, then. Right. Uh, Clockwork Orange versus Caligula. Which did you like better? Um. You know, let me count. Huh. Let me count the breasts. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, as far as nudity is concerned, I mean, they're both about the same. I oh, mean, Caligula's got way you more. You think so? Yeah, dude. Right. <laughs> oh, Caligula's got straight up hardcore pornography. Sure. Right? Yeah, okay, I guess I guess I think, right. I think Caligula may even have more dick statues too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't equal, think I know. Equal amount Mal Mal uh, Malcolm McDowell though. Mike M Malcolm, Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Well, I mean, yeah. He is dancing around naked in the uh, storm and the rain <laughs> sequence in Caligula. That's how he catches the fever. Hmm. I first saw this movie a uh, long time ago. I was uh, probably in junior high. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was I was renting all kinds of weird shit. And I was... Um, the first Stanley Kubrick movie I ever saw was The Shining. So I was a big Shining fan when I was really young. I'm okay. Still am, of course. Yeah. And our video store had Clockwork Orange. I, I knew of the movie. Sure. Especially that it that it was him and I loved The Shining. So I'm in the video store with my dad. And I was sixth, seventh grade, maybe. I'm in the video store with my dad. And I see Clockwork Orange sitting there. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rent that. I mean, it might be something that I'll like. I get it. My dad's looking at it going like, you're renting that? That movie's weird. <laughs> <laughs> this Clockwork Orange is not my dad's kind of movie. <laughs> he was telling me, he goes like, yeah, your mom and I tried watching that like 10 years ago. It was on HBO or something. And we didn't care all that much for it. You can watch that one by yourself when I go to sleep. Of so, course it's on HBO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so my dad goes to sleep, so I watch Clockwork Orange. I like from the first frame, from the credits, I'm like in love with this movie. Really? Like unlike anything I had seen before at that time. Even to this day, it's really not like anything I'd seen I'd seen before. <laughs> and so the next day I'm talking to my dad. I'm going, like, I watched Clockwork Orange last night. He's like, Oh, what'd you think? I'm like, Oh my god, I freaking loved it. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. So I would like show my friends, like I introduced it to I introduced Dave to it and oh, really? Buford and I went to a religious school, you know. So sure. I'm like passing it around to my <laughs> friends. Like same with Caligula. When I got to high school I was doing that with Caligula, where I was like I was the dealer. I'm like, Yeah man, you want this. You want Caligula, you want Clockwork Orange. <laughs> we would don't, all kind of do that with let, each other. Don't let the deacon see you. <laughs> we, would, we would trade sometimes. There was a dude I went to high school with, and he had, like, dolomite. And he's like, pass over trading. Nice. I'm like, all right, you loan me dolomite, I'll give you a nice. Caligula. You want the R-rated version? You want the good stuff. Was I this know you like, want the good stuff. Was this at, like, SHG or... No, uh, Luther. I went to Luther in high school. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. So I, there was a, uh, uh, I even dressed like Alex for, this is what, <laughs> this is the kind of review it's going to be, by the way. It's like, we'll be talking about the movie in the sense of, let me tell you about when I dressed up like Alex DeLarge for Halloween. Nice. And went to the costume dance at my religious school. Nice. Dressed like Alex DeLarge. Nice. The music teacher sees me and is like, of course you're dressed like that. I don't know. In retrospect, I don't know what that means. Like, he's going to prison. That's why he's tired in class every day, going out all his raping the night before. So, did you like the movie? Not as much as you do. I didn't expect you to think it's like a life changing experience. Um, like, all right, so here's the thing here's the thing. Usually, I don't go for uh, real art house movies, uh -huh. um, and so this was the original art house movie. You know, like <laughs> I mean, every like every art house movie nowadays Clockwork is, Orange. is trying to be the next Clockwork. So, Orange. so you're looking at this like you just watch the origins of A24 movies, basically. <laughs> you're watching. You're watching. <laughs> You're like you're going like I understand all these movies yeah. now. Like, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna enroll back in college just so you can hang the posters on your wall. Um, I finally get it now. <laughs> so so that being said, um, I mean, 
so so that being said, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the genre. Uh, but but now seeing like I said, seeing the origins. I, I mean, I, I don't kinda, think this is the original art. No, house movie. but <laughs> Bef- but before you get hundreds the, of comments, right, right. <laughs> but let's let's be real. They, they it is a very days, influential movie. Yeah, these it's days. Inc- I mean, Kubrick yeah. in general, oh, yeah. especially Clockwork. Yeah, Clockwork. and don't get me wrong. I I got nothing but good things to say about Kubrick. Nothing but uh, good things. Um, Except you hated this film. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Um. I just, I was just kind of like, okay, this is, this is, this is a good movie. This is solid. This is solid. Mm-hmm. Now, now here's the thing. If you're worried about uh, commenters, I feel like now, uh, just, just based on your uh, uh, audience and everything, yeah, uh, liking, liking uh, Clockwork Orange. I mean, I'm sure there's some that probably don't. Oh, okay. That probably feel like you do. I was gonna say. Now I think you're gonna see a bunch of what Jared doesn't like. Clockwork no, Orange. no, no. I think you're good. I think you're good. So there'll, there'll be plenty of people of all kinds who like you know, love the movie, and because it's it is a controversial movie. Yeah. Um. So there'll be uh, some that are probably as in love with it as I am, and then others who probably don't care for it that much. I got some friends who aren't huge on the movie. Yeah. I uh like I said, like I said, I, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, I hated this movie. That sucked. You know? Um it was just things like um uh See, and this is the problem now. We we uh, we, we watched, watched all these. Movies yeah, afterwards. we watched, and now I need to remember. Uh, How do you forget everything. Clockwork Orange? Uh, <laughs> um, well, for one thing, I I didn't, you know, I I kind of felt bad for Alex, you know, going sure. through that, going through that, um, uh, going through this uh, treatment, so to speak, um, that was a little too effective. Mm-hmm. You know, because it was it it did it did curb his uh, primal instincts, but it seemed to also curb like free will. Yes, yeah, free will. It's is, a movie his about more, his more natural primal sure, instincts. Sure, you because know, you're taking then, the most immoral person in the world and then making a morality play out of him. Yeah, basically, yeah. Where we're taking this guy and saying we're curing him. Yeah, but are you really exactly. like you're not? You're you're just sort of just taking away his choice yeah. like it's not like he's suddenly like hey, the best person in the world it's like he's got urges but he can't I mean he can't even defend himself later, exactly. to the extent that he can't defend himself later on exactly but you like I mean that's that's what this movie does incredibly well yeah. in that you like watching a movie about this guy who is a terrible person he's uh-huh. a gang leader he's a rapist mm-hmm. he's a sadist even like little things too he's like ultra smug <laughs> throughout the movie <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. like but he but doesn't like sarcasm all that much so but it's all from his point of view he's sure. the narrator he's the one telling sure. us this story so in his mind in his point of view he's this whimsical hero sure like yeah. he's like He's the hero of this story. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, the yeah. good guy. He's yeah. the one like he's he he calls us his friend. Exactly. Like the audience. Exactly. It's so in, during the narration. Yeah. He's like he's like your friend but and humble blah, blah, blah. narrator. <laughs> like your friend and humble narrator and everything. So yeah, like and that's what's kind of cool about it because he's telling this story as if, you know, He's just, he's the good guy and we're rooting for him. (laughs) We're along with this ride, which is important because it does make this character likable. You're watching this movie of this guy who's done just horrific things, Uh but you like seeing this guy on screen. And part of that has to do with how well written it is. And also Malcolm McDowell, who it's such a great performance like because he can, he always feels like he's the same character, but but there's different sides to him there's parts in the movie where he's funny there's parts in the movie where Mm -hmm. he's scary Mm -hmm. there's parts in it where he's sadistic there's parts where he's helpless yeah it really is this journey with this character and his comedic timing is good his menace is good it's an all-around spectacular performance Mm -hmm. he gives i mean you can see how it's a very star making iconic role for yeah 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 for sure um i will say uh, one of the things that I, I I wasn't a fan of, 
uh, was like the music choices during during the scenes and whatnot. It, like again, it's like very art house like. They're they're playing classical music while while a gang is about to rape a girl and everything. And I'm just kind of like, I like oh. it. <laughs> I do. I mean, there is context. He is a fan of classical music. Sure. Um, and it's you know Kubrick got right. a lot of classical music in his movies. I, I guess never, he does. I never had a problem with that. I guess like, he does, doesn't he? Huh. 2001, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I never had a problem with it, because I kind of like that... I, I, I do really like that this is... It is a pretty brutal world, in that there's all these gangs that come out at night. Sure, and, yeah. like, kidnap people, kill people, rape people, do, like, breaking and entering and shit. But... The attitude of a lot of the side characters in it is very whimsical. Like, a lot of them go around with kind of these jolly smiles on their faces, whether it's like uh, his his parents or the doctors yeah. or uh, uh, it, it, the, the, those two that come into uh, Patrick McNee's place. Uh, near the end of the movie when he's when he's getting drugged sure um i mean not everyone in the movie is like that like there's the the prison guard right. that guy's great <laughs> right? yeah. oh my god that guy that prison guard <laughs> that guy who's who's like when john cleese plays hitler like he's <laughs> i love that guy because he's going through this movie calling alex a monster yeah. and a bastard, which yeah. he is. But then that guy is like getting his sadistic rocks off and watching Alex getting beaten and him like verbally abusing him. And then he is that that guard is into that topless girl who comes on stage. Right, right. Like, <laughs> Mouth a gate hold hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> uh, there's there's just a little <laughs> funny things in the movie I like. Like uh I like when he's getting the uh, the Ludovico treatment when he's got the things in his eyes and he's watching. And yeah, yeah eventually he's oh, classic. Eventually he starts getting sick, but at first he's kind of critiquing the movies a little <laughs> yeah, bit before yeah. he starts getting nauseous. Yeah. And like he's like, well, I mean, he's like watching this movie, and, he, and he's like, well, you know, it's framed well, the sound's very good, yeah. and, you know, it seems uh, fairly well edited together. <laughs> and that's a and and so that's uh, let's talk about uh, a little bit of. Uh, Clockwork Orange's uh, influence because, like, that's been referenced in in many other oh, films and TV shows. Yeah. Uh, the um, where he decided to turn on his gang members yeah. was also referenced uh, yeah, a, a lot. Of, the Simpsons is referenced it a lot. Yeah, um, most adult animated shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Critic did back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's just so much uh, so much stuff that like these days like. Like even the, even when that uh, scene came on, they're slow mo walking, and I'm just like, "Where have I seen this?" Yeah. And you had to Google it. You're like South Park, and yeah. I'm like, "That's right." <laughs> <laughs> I love this <laughs> because they make him so like he's this folk hero in the movie, and they make him so likable to the point where you've seen him do these horrible things. Yeah. But then you feel kind of bad when his parents kick him out. Right? When he comes home, I mean, he's so happy to be honestly. Home. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, because I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like wouldn't they know that he's coming home? Like, 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 wouldn't they like know that he's being transferred from from prison to this uh, to this institution? Maybe they thought he'd be at the record store again <laughs> or something. And, or... and like, and like, you know, they say, "Oh, you'll be out of here in a fortnight." Okay, mom and dad, two weeks. You know, like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, like, like that should be that yeah, should be the uh, maybe the collect notice. calls are really expensive in this future. <laughs> like, I think it is technically set in the nineties. <laughs> um, and he goes and like his dad, who's his dad, who just goes, well, I mean, you know, we've already rented your room, out, right? And he's he already, already paid, paid for the next month's. Which, room. What about my snake? Which. <laughs> Which refund him, refund him. Let, uh, tell him we, you know. Even Joe is busy. Joe's sitting there eating his toast. <laughs> and Get his really snake. What happened to his snake? His dad just goes like, "Yeah, your snake. He, he met with a, he met with a bad accident. <laughs> like, what happened? I know what happened. The guy playing his dad is in, was in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom <laughs> in the dinner scene. I know what happened to that snake." 
I saw it in his other movie. It is a movie that it's full of very iconic imagery, sure. especially costume designing, sure. performance, the humor in it, mm -hmm. and just these little ticks that Malcolm McDowell has to have in it. Like one of my favorites is when he's not sure if the wine has been drugged or not. Yeah. So so he's like looking at yeah, it. Yeah. But trying to be casual. Yeah. Like he, you can tell he's nervous. Yeah. And he's trying to figure out if it's drug right. by like sort of making small talk uh -huh. and like seeing if they want any right and it's a really good performance because he's got to right. play it cool yeah, but yeah you can yeah. tell yeah you can tell he's scared yeah and <laughs> i love one of my favorite parts is um when he's in the hospital at the end and that uh that nurse comes in to do the uh that fill in the blank questionnaire thing with them with the cartoons yeah. and what i love about that scene is one he's very funny in that scene and two he gets better at that game as it goes along <laughs> like because there's like four or five slides that she shows him and at first what he's saying is like kind of random and then like later on he actually has like really good punchlines. yeah yeah him. yeah I, I i noticed that as well Go, Fast on. enough. Oh, I've already run out of notes. The only thing that my note says is this movie is awesome. It's one of the best <laughs> movies ever made. All right, so you're get you obviously give this movie an A plus, oh, it's right? An a plus. A plus. Yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta go with. I gotta go with a B. Sure. Only because that, like I said, this just isn't uh, this just isn't my thing. Good I movie. knew it wasn't your thing. Yeah. Like. And I knew you. it's not something you would probably watch if not for doing this show. But I didn't think you would dislike it. No. Because there is a lot of humor in it. Yeah. It does keep a lot of energy going. Yeah. Malcolm McDowell is, of course, very fun. Yeah. Uh, it's masterfully I, directed. I, um, uh, no, I, I definitely didn't, uh, didn't dislike this movie. Uh, and I honestly did have uh, Clockwork Orange. Uh, on my to see list yeah. for uh, quite a while. So so I do think that I would have seen it eventually, but I just kept like putting it off. <laughs> but to go back to the question earlier, which would you rather watch, uh, Ooh, Caligula um, or um, Clockwork Orange? God, that's tough. That is, <laughs> that is really a tough question because I feel like I feel like if I pick Caligula, uh, I'll I'll look like some kind of porn perv. Whereas if I pick uh, um, if I pick uh, Clockwork Orange, uh, I can. You're on this channel, man. No one is going to be <laughs> outraged that you like Caligula. It's um, like my favorite movie. Like you're you're good. You're in safe hands. God, it is. I, like Malcolm McDowell might be upset if you prefer uh, Caligula. Oh no, kidding! He, no, he wouldn't. Oh. Like he's. <laughs> We met him before. He's, he's, he's got watching. no. We met him. Before. He's got. He has. He doesn't like Caligula, but he has a real sense of humor about it. Like oh, he right tells on. really good stories about it. And, oh, cool. Uh, um, he's on the audio commentary for Caligula. So when we met him, he signed my uh, Caligula yeah. uh, vinyl and just wrote very bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <God. McDonald. laughs> <laughs> but he did have like uh, it was at one of the cons. He did have like some headshots from Caligula on there. Caligula, oh, that's cool. Clockwork Orange yeah. and Halloween and <laughs> Star Trek. I'm sure. Um, gosh, that's really that's really a hard question. I don't know. Um, all depends on how horny you are. <laughs> Okay, let's let's say that. Let's say that. Depends yeah. on how horny I am at the mm -hmm. moment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if it's been a while, Caligula. <laughs> Not so much. Yeah, yeah. If I'm if I'm wanting to let my freak flag fly a little bit, Caligula. It does have a man with an ass on his stomach. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, oh yeah. Tiberius is a grotto. Oh, stomach yeah. ass man. Stomach ass man. Stomach ass man is in there. Three eyed lady. Endless possibilities. <laughs> Except for maybe an erection. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just saying it. I, I, it probably smells terrible in there. <laughs> Well, it was ancient Greece. Yeah, ancient Rome. <laughs> oh, Greece Rome. smelled fine. It smelled like a fresh salad. <laughs> the kind you eat with lettuce. You keep needing to be more specific on that. 
<laughs> so that's Clockwork Orange. Of course I give it an A+, plus. you give it a B. That's about what I figured. Yeah. I knew you would like it better than In the Earth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a, this is one of Laura's favorite movies. I remember I was... Uh, I was dating someone a long time ago. This was like 20 years ago. I was dating someone and she was talking to me about how she'd never seen Clockwork Orange or Caligula. So uh -huh. I'm like, oh, two of my favorite movies. Right. We put on Clockwork Orange. She loves it. So I'm like, oh, maybe that means she'll like Caligula. And then she said, before I put in Caligula, she says, um, yeah, I just, you know, sex and violence is fine. I just don't really like, you know, like pornography or anything. And then uh -oh. I'm like, this might be rough. Uh oh. So like 15 minutes into Caligula, it was awkward. It was so <laughs> awkward, dude. I could have like put in a snuff film and she probably would have reacted better. Like, dude, yeah. Like 15 minutes in, she's like, I don't like this. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. She's like, she's like, no, no. I, it's your favorite movie. I want to see it. I'm like, if you're already not liking this, it's not going to get better yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We are two hours from the part where a dog eats a man's dick, so I don't see you warming up to it. She's like, well, can we watch the R-rated version? I'm like, yeah, that one's not as good. But I put in the R-rated version. At the end of it, she's like, that sucked. And I'm like, yeah, it was the R-rated version. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with Tiger House after this. We'll return after these messages. We have blasted the air. Now, uh, now we just play the waiting and game, waiting right. game again until we start sweating. Bullets. Right. Oh my god! Don't worry. I don't think we'll talk about this one as long as we talked about Cockroach <laughs> because this movie, this is a movie called Tiger House, and I am sad to report it is not about someone stuck in a house with tigers. <laughs> it could have been. It's got the actors from Crawl in it about a house of alligators. It. It's also not about a, a, a frat house uh, called Tiger's. It would be called Tiger House. <laughs> yeah. King Frat meets Roar. <laughs> only with lions instead of tiger. Only with tigers instead of lions. Now, like, all right, this movie is quintessential. It is what it is. I can say some things about it that are fine. Um, it is cuts to the chase yeah it's short it does it does not overstay it's welcome it's only like 80 minutes long the acting is is fine it's it's a home invasion movie the um uh kea uh, uh scola dario I, I'm, I'm sure i'm pronouncing that wrong from uh the Ma from the maze runner movies she sneaks into the window of her boyfriend's room and he lives at home with his parents pretty soon after the house is taken over by these bank robbers and the acting is fine uh she's good uh Del Grey Scott he's very good in this Ed Skrine is the movie's edited okay it just is what it is it's a home invasion thriller there's nothing more it adds to the genre mm -hmm. there's no at least for me, there was no surprises in it. Um, it does. There's nothing gimmicky about it. When it ended, I was like, "It's not that this is a bad movie. I just don't know why this exists. It really right. does nothing with this genre. Yeah. It's just a simple home invasion movie. Yeah, not a terrible one. Just one that." Is. exists it's <laughs> it a is. conveyor belt movie like this <laughs> and i know that that's a genre that's been done to death yeah but it kill it still can be good like i saw one this year called shut in that was very good it, it was very suspenseful and well acted this is just a movie that just kind of simply goes through the motions yeah. and exists yeah. I, I i don't know i mean what about you um I mean, pretty much the same. You you, you mentioned that uh, you weren't uh, you weren't caught off guard by the uh, 
the, the surprise plot the twist. twist. <laughs> I was not. It's, from the beginning, I was like, yep, this is what that's going to be. That, that's how this is going to um, tie into that. And I I don't know. I, at first, I was kind of surprised. But yeah, once you, uh, once you kind of pointed it out, I was just kind of like, oh, okay. I looked at you. You were like, oh. <laughs> and I looked at you and went, did you not see that coming? And you go, you did? I'm like, yeah, like 70 minutes ago. <laughs> you weren't paying attention. I was. I just... If I'm... you weren't paying attention to this, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> okay, then fine. I, won't. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't blame no, you if you weren't paying I, attention to I, this film. No, I, I, I more or less was uh, paying attention. I guess I just... I guess I just wasn't paying attention to the uh, to the subtle uh, subtleties because because there was really nothing subtle about this movie. No, so it was yeah. so it was just kind of like okay, whatever. Mm. This movie's you know like I knew what was going on, but like you know finer details I was just like oblivious to. It's I guess. I, yeah, the movie's not subtle. It's more like this is just a by the numbers movie like this. Sure. And what is the twist going to be in a by the numbers movie like this? It's going to be exactly what the twist was. Mm. in this movie and okay. it, a lot of it is just too convenient yeah. like you know we start out where there was an accident with a crossbow that way she can have an arrow with her and when the time yeah. comes she can use it yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in the crossbow <laughs> she finds in the attic <laughs> and granted there are a few good kill shots in it. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll give it that. The action sequences were pretty cool. They were fine. Like, it, it's not badly... The movie's not badly edited. It's not badly shot. It's just all You're, of it's serviceable. You weren't looking at the CGI explosion okay. in That the bedroom, wasn't very though. good. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 fire, the fire wasn't good, but everything else was serviceable. But you, you factor in, like the really convenient stuff with the arrow and there's a lot of stuff on top of that like one of the robbers is wounded and they look over and see the screensaver on the laptop that happens to show a picture of the wife who is a nurse yeah so, so then they're like oh this means she's the nurse which honestly they probably already should have known at this point right if that's the case yeah but yeah, but aside from that and also a lot of what the hero does in this is wildly dependent on the villains not having any peripheral vision or always looking in the wrong direction right, yeah like it's a you're playing like the stealth level in a, in a game right like like the like like you'd hear like just like the voices you usually hear in those kind of games like what was that <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the bat like you know which, which which it did. It uh, honestly watching this movie kind of uh, made me think about the uh, possibilities of a home invasion video game. Honestly, where I'm you're sure there's so. Oh yeah, yeah. there's a uh, uh, um, uh, night trap. Oh, oh okay. yeah, there's plenty of like uh, Sega CD. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I it, it's 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 a concept that isn't like that I would honestly be more surprised it didn't exist. Night you know? Trap was way more original than this. Really? Like this one. Yeah, this one, everyone is just types, you know? Yeah. This group of robbers, one of them is the wild card. Yeah. He's the crazy one yeah. who's like gonna beat a man's face in with a bat. Right. And even looking at some of their dynamics, like, you know, the crazy one and the guy who is like wounded but does some noble things like the movie the crooked cop like, on the inside yeah like yeah like the movie is almost like it started out with a pitch of like what if reservoir dogs was a home invasion thriller <laughs> uh, but then it kind of just became this generic thing and the ending doesn't really it's not that it doesn't I was, it, it, it just confused me. Why did she get all the money? Right. Why does she get all the money? And why did they split up? Like, like, like that just didn't make any sense. I feel like this is a longer conversation these characters should have had and not minutes after they've escaped right. this like, traumatic experience. Yeah, yeah. Get everything, get everything squared away. Get everything, you know, like the, get, put out the fire, arrest the crooks, all this other stuff, recuperate from this and then have a discussion about like, okay, uh, uh, where is where is our uh, relationship going? And and what are we going to do about the money? You know, wh who's going to take the money? 
Oh, we gotta this. get this in 80 minutes, man. <laughs> this movie's on a time crunch. That was that was really tick, tick, crunched. Tick, 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 tick. That was yeah. really crunched. I mean it didn't it didn't shit the bed nearly as much as that Michael Douglas movie we watched <laughs> last time. Beyond the Reach, the one that was in the desert. Uh, where it was the kind of cat oh, and mouse game. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Like, that movie, so this movie pretty much just consistently stays the definition of mediocre. Yeah. Whereas Beyond the Reach was like mediocre, 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 total dog shit. Yeah. This, no, it's pretty much about the same yeah. throughout it. Yeah. I would give to me, this is this is the type of movie that the C grade was made for. <laughs> it's a C. It's not terrible. It just exists. It just I, exists. But I could think of things that are way worse that I would recommend more than this. Yeah. Because some stuff that's worse can at least be, you'll remember it. Yeah. You know, like, it'll stand yeah. out to you. True. It's just wildly more flawed than this movie yeah. is. But this, I, I don't know in what circumstance I would say, like, you should watch Tiger House. Right, um, right. You know, especially if you're looking at, uh, looking for a movie that has a strong, um, a uh, strong female lead. Uh, I really think uh, I really think you'll li uh, you'll like this movie. But I will. I I gotta agree with you. It's mm -hmm. it's by and large just a, a a very mediocre C film. And this was recommended to us by Daniel Kirsten, by the way. Okay. I hope this isn't one of his favorite movies. I mean, we didn't hate it. Yeah. No, we didn't hate it. I mean, we talked down to it quite a bit. <laughs> We were smug as shit to this movie. I have the Alex DeLarge smirk through the whole thing. <laughs> um, so, I also hope he didn't work on the movie as well. Oh shit, he's the director. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's great. It's great, yeah. <laughs> it's a C for cool. <laughs> Is that what you're giving it? Yeah, uh, yeah. C? I'm with you on, yeah. on that rating. I'm with you on that rating. I'm so glad you didn't give it a higher grade than Clockwork Orange. <laughs> <laughs> right, that Clockwork Orange is fine. It's no Tiger House. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be back with the 1985 Tim Curry crime caper comedy Blue Mon Blue Money. I, ugh, I keep I still keep accidentally <laughs> saying like Blue Monday. Blue Money. We'll be right back with that after this. Smashing. Turn after these messages. What about Anthony Quinn doing Zorba? They said Zorba was mad, but it was the dancing. Only the dancing that stopped the pain. Oh, yeah. Not forgetting our friend the human mountain. What's his name? Love me forever and ever, and I feel the same. Dennis Roussos. There we go. Uh, All right. Sorry, man. Air is uh, gone again, uh, dude. All right. Well, at least this is the last one. All right. A movie. Another movie I hadn't heard of. This is... Let's a, set the sweat timer. <laughs> we'll set the sweat. Dude, it's already ringing. Check out my pits, bro. Check out my gooch. This this is no longer water in here. It's a gooch sweat catch. Ooh. Oh, I left it in there. Lord drank half of it. I'll kiss you later, honey. <laughs> so you said, so this is a movie where Tim Curry is a cab driver and he's being a chauffeur for a dude who leaves a case of money in the back seat. And Tim Curry's like, well, I need the cash. And like speeds off with it and then has some, I guess, like gangsters after him. And he's like kind of trying to simultaneously sort of get away, but also mainly just spend a lot of money. Right. And you were saying that this movie really spoke to you. <laughs> I, I related to uh, Curry's character because Larry. I... Larry, yeah, because, yeah. uh, you know, being an Uber and cab driver, yeah, I was an Uber driver and a cab driver with aspirations of, of, of show business. Yeah, I, I really related to uh, mm -hmm. Larry. And then, and then, you know, he stumbles upon this money and I'm just like, 
Yeah, you were sitting there go, going, go, drive there, off. go, drive, take it, dude, dude, go. <laughs> and I'm so glad he did. <laughs> I'm so glad he did. Um, honestly, I I dug this movie. I really did. I liked it too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I did too. It, it's flawed. Um, yeah. But uh, here's. But in a really important way, it does work. I mean, you can definitely tell it's a TV movie. Yeah. It's shot just like a uh, a TV movie that, yeah. at, the, at, the, at the time. Yeah. Uh, a mixture of that and also a sitcom. Like, it even kind of has, like, sitcom opening credits. Yeah. Almost like it's a pilot. <laughs> yeah, mixed, yeah, in, yeah. mixed in a little bit. If, like... Tim Curry starred in The Pest, the John Leguizamo movie. Like, yeah. remember the opening credit sequence for that where Leguizamo's I, in the shower doing impressions? Like, I don't, but. Oh, watch, rewatch, <laughs> rewatch that. Like, when he's a vampire going, I'm stinky dinky, and then is like farting in the shower and shit. <laughs> this has Tim Curry in the bathtub on like a keyboard. I think this is a better movie than The Pest, by the way, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Excellent oh, opening credit sequence aside. This is the kind of movie where it's all kind of manufactured around the lead's performance. Meaning it's a, it's a movie that's built to showcase his strengths as, as a performer. Yeah. Because he's playing a guy who's like, he's a struggling actor. He's a comedian. He does impressions. Mm -hmm. He does, um, he does Elvis in it. Yeah. He does Mick Jagger. Yeah. He's got some parts where he sings. So, and the movie stops through a lot of it to kind of showcase a lot of it. Yeah. The plot is really sexy. Secondary to yeah. Tim Curry kind of doing a one man show in terms yeah. of his. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people in the movie. I just mean it really is kind of like you're watching a Tim Curry sort of stage performance between these impressions and these songs he's doing mm -hmm. with a plot that's sometimes going on. Yeah, and what makes it work? is he's really good in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's a great actor. Yeah. And he's an excellent leading man here. Totally. So, yeah, the movie, it will... There's a lot of padding in this movie, mm -hmm. especially for an 80-minute film. There's a lot of padding where it'll stop for Tim Curry to... Sing a song. Sing a song. Yeah. Or to uh, do an impression of Anthony Quinn. Yeah. Or, uh, or more songs. Or um, some back and forths with Billy Connolly, who shows up later in the movie. Yeah. And you can tell the plot is taking a back seat to all of mm. this. And I could... S we see comedies all the time that do stuff like this, and they don't do it... I'm not even saying that this movie necessarily does it well. They just do it better than some bad comedies that we see a lot where the movie will kind of stop for this improv to take over. Mm -hmm. But usually when we see that now, one, the movie is always too long. Right. This is only an 80-minute movie. Yeah. It's in and out. Yeah. And it and it does kind of keep things going mostly. Yeah. Um, and when we see bad things like that in, in in a movie now, it'll just kind of happen in a movie to where it doesn't even feel like you're watching the same character anymore. Yeah. Whereas in this, it is established he is a wannabe comedic actor sure. and comedian and singer. So it is worked into his character sure. and the story that he is kind of stopping to do these performances. Yeah. And... His performances are good. Like yeah. when he does when he's doing Elvis. Tim Curry's phenomenally talented. Yeah. And this is a movie that showcases a lot of his strengths as an actor. I agree. Especially as a leading man. Yeah. The comedic parts, the more serious parts, the impressionist parts, mm -hmm. the, the musical bits. Hell, there's a part in this movie where it's at a costume party. Yeah. And you see someone in the background. Yeah. Dressed up like Frank. Frank and Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's it's a movie that it, it is definitely built around him performing. And it works yeah. because he's good at it. So you can just have a good night watching Tim Curry perform for like 80 minutes yeah. in this like sort of caper comedy. Yeah. Um, do we want to talk about the flaws? I think I just did. Oh. Like, I mean, those are kind of my flaws. With oh, it. like I had some, I had some continuity flaws. Yeah. I, I had some continuity complaints. Like, uh, there was one uh, time where the, uh, gangsters like, caught up with the uh, hitchhiker 
and just like instantly knew where the money was. Yeah. And I was like, how? <laughs> I mean, maybe they explained it. I don't know. But like, it's again, going back to what I said earlier, the plot really is kind of secondary yeah. to, to the, the jokes and like the singing. I mean, sure. it's not a musical in the traditional sense, but there are parts where it stops where someone's on stage and they're singing something. Sure. Yeah. Um, there would be times where I would think that the movie was about over with and then it would continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I thought it was wrapping up at one point and then it does nuns on the run <laughs> for like five minutes where Tim Curry and uh, uh, Pam in it are dressed like nuns to try to yeah. escape. Yeah. And you are, you are rooting for this guy because Tim Curry's likable and uh, totally. it, it does a good job of kind of putting you in his shoes, even though he is like, he is making a lot of dumb decisions in yeah. this. I mean, taking the money to begin with wasn't a bright move, no, but also but... he's going on this spend crazy thing with it, re not realizing like this is kind of all he's got all right, this yeah, money. Yeah. <laughs> like he's just burning it on like cigar, like using it matches on cigars at one point. He's doing that. He's buying a boat for some reason for, yeah. you know, just, I guess just to have it like, like, uh, Oh, and, and, and so that's another thing too. He's, he's apparently a divorced father in this movie. And so it's like, why, isn't some of that money going to the kids? Because it established the mom's a racist. <laughs> that, that too. <laughs> My God. It's okay. Wow. She likes the good ones. Wow. <laughs> she... uh, no, they do that in the movie. They establish that in the film. Like, oh, I, know. I guess that's why they I know. split up. That's why I'm wowing because, yeah, you just reminded me of that terrible ex-wife character. She was, <laughs> she was also shit. not digging Tim Curry's performance at the end of the film. <laughs> like, he, uh, it's a sweet movie, you know. Yeah. It's got it, it. It ends about like you think it would, and it's kind of like you know, it's a likable film. So really? he's he's up there doing like a live. You're expecting that ending. Cause I was, I was I mean, not expecting this to end bad. Well, I, okay, I guess. I mean, I guess I was just, uh, I was just glad that it ended the way it did. No, I was too, and it ended about like I thought it would. The movie itself is kind of a sitcom. Yeah. And okay, so I, I guess, it, I guess it makes sense that it would have a satis uh, satisfying and ending. It, and it always had this kind of lightheartedness to it sure. throughout a majority. I think the movie's only rated PG. So oh, it is it? a lighthearted kind of caper movie. So yeah, it ended about like I thought it would. And the kids are watching Tim Curry perform. And they're like, you know, they're happy and watching him. But the ex-wife is like looking pissed and has her eyebrow, mm. her eyebrow raised and shit. I'm like... Why because God go? will judge him. Yeah. <laughs> were they even, how were they even married? What What is this relationship? <laughs> ah. They really were the odd couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there needs to be a sequel or a prequel. I mean, it is, it, it does have, like I said earlier, there, there is a lot of padding, but I was still finding stuff to like kind of enjoy, like when they walked into the old McDonald's and I was trying right. to see what was on the menu. I'm yeah. like, ooh, what do we got here <laughs> on this 1985 menu? Give me a McDLT. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it is, it's a very good Friday night movie. If you want to like order some food, maybe it's raining outside. Yeah. You just want something really lighthearted and likable to watch. And especially if you're a big Tim Curry fan. Yeah. Um, this is a perfect movie for that. It's not a spectacular film. It's not great. It's not a masterpiece. It's definitely flawed, but it's a comfort movie. I could see this being a very comfort movie for yeah. people. Yeah. And in that regard, yeah, you know, you, you got, Either either with friends or uh, your significant other, you, you have some food, you got the lights out. This is a nice movie to watch for that. It's about perfect for that. Yeah. So I, I'd give it a B. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, B. I agree with that, and I'm also kind of surprised that you were that generous. I, I almost thought you'd, you'd give it a C. No, this movie's better than Tiger Eye. Because I am recommending it. Yeah. Like, I, I do recommend it. Under the right circumstances, certainly. Because it's not a great film. No. But it's a good one. It is a it's, good It's one. a good one. And if you, especially if you want to see a movie starring Tim Curry that doesn't get talked about 
nearly as much as a lot of his other ones. Sure. Yeah. Like I, I hadn't. To be honest, I hadn't heard of this until it got recommended. Yeah, uh, me neither. For for me to watch, and I liked it. You know, yeah. it was it was a nice movie. Um, so yeah, it's it's totally a B. There's you know? even a it's, scene. It's, I I just want to talk about the scene where he's even doing an American accent, and he does it really well. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, <laughs> he is a good actor. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's he's definitely one of those actors who. There's only one person like Tim Curry, you know, he's that unique of an actor. Yeah, totally. And so to, to see him in this, where he does show a lot of range in this film, mm -hmm. other than, you know, he's in a lot of parts where he's great, certainly, but he's being, you know, kind of crazy Tim Curry, um, which, again, he's remarkable as, but he is a great actor. He is a, he is a versatile actor. And this movie does show that. Like, it, he, he does show a lot of strength in this. Mm -hmm. they, they give him a lot to work with here. So, yeah, it, it was good. If you haven't seen it, it, check it out. You know, it's a good rental movie. Um, so you're also a B. Yeah. Yeah. You finally want some of this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. I've, I've gone this long without it. I'm good. I'm dehydrated <laughs> as fuck, but I'm, I'm, I'm going for it, you know? Uh, thanks again to um, Jordan for Clockwork Orange, to Daniel Kirsten for Tiger House, and to R Rory Gallagher for Blue Money, who has been a huge uh, supporter to us over on, on Patreon. Nice. So thank you for this request and uh, the other requests in the past as well, and in the future too. We'll definitely be getting to all those and be doing these uh, yeah, a, lot, a lot more here. So be expecting this. And thanks to everyone in the chat as well. Oh my God, can you actually see? Yeah, the sweat. Whoa, dude. Look at that sweat. Is, how about mine? This is either sweat or I am terrible at drinking water. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. So welcome to sauna reviews. I know, right? God. Whoa. So come back and see us sweat some more. <laughs> Where are you at on Twitch again? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Jared Foils. All right. Thanks a bunch for watching, everyone. Take care.